Serious. Dear Reddit, what are some of your weirdest, scariest paranormal experiences? The cameras at my work are programmed to flick through areas of motion when they are inactive. One night at like 3 a.m. when I was alone for a four block radius, all of them flicked to the door right outside my office. There are 190 separate camera feeds. So I used to work in a grocery store, small store, so we didn't have a specific job we did, like cashier, but all of us did what was needed and we felt like that day. If you didn't feel like you wanted to deal with customers, you could just do inventory or stock shelves. Nice job. First, I noticed something weird was when I was doing the evening shift before closing. My coworker was with me, it was a slow evening, and he was taking a break downstairs. So I was checking best before dates from products near the cash register and in front of the doors. I was completely alone and suddenly I heard the heavy metal door shut close that led to the break room. I just thought, well, my coworker is coming back up, nothing unusual, didn't even bother to turn around. Until my coworker runs to me and asks, did I go downstairs a minute ago? I said, no, I've been here the whole time and the only one here. He asks, am I sure? I say, I am completely sure and see him freaking out a bit and he is not a man who freaks out easily. For example, we had a theft and he ran after the thief until he gave him back what he stole. So he starts checking the whole store, which is really not big, and no one is found. Okay, we still call our boss in case it is a robbery or something, and he comes by. We watch the security tape and see the heavy metal door slightly opening and closing, but no one going. After this incident, my coworker says he has heard footsteps after closing, but never found anyone. So another evening shift, I'm the cashier again and working with my other coworker. He's checking the freezer in the back, so I'm alone in the store. This old lady comes in, and I greet her from the cash register. She doesn't answer. Whatever. People often don't. I'm bored, so I decide to follow her through the security monitor. She just walks around and goes to a blind spot, so I don't see her through cameras. But she never comes out. I'm waiting, thinking, WTF? Pretty sure this place is haunted by now. I go to that aisle, and there's no one there. My coworker comes to let me go home and asks, is the store empty? I tell him what happened and he just shrugs, saying he's seen the old lady and doesn't get it either. Western Oklahoma, at my grandparents when I was six years old. My older sister and I convinced our grandpa to let us sleep on the porch. He had a border collie that was fiercely protective of us. Anyway, sometime in the middle of the night, my sister wakes up. There was a shed about 50 feet away and floating next to it was a ball of light. It had a diameter of about four to six feet. It made absolutely no sound, and it was not moving at all. I was scared, but my sister thought it would be a good idea to walk towards it to see what it was. She got about halfway, and it shot off at about 90 degrees into the sky without making any noise. Never did figure out what it was, and no, the dog did nothing except kind of hide. I have extensive hypnagogia, where I can experience sleep paralysis and sometimes even sleepwalk while being aware of my surroundings. When I experience hypnagogia, I see shadows move about quickly all around me and hear whispers from them. It's a frightening experience and I always woke up standing in another room with my heart pounding hard and would realize the whispers I hear were from myself speaking. I always wondered if I had some serious mental disorder or if there was something more to it. I think I might be going through mine right now. We live in a 100 year old plus building in New York City. There is a surprisingly large pool of rent collected tenants, all of whom, for those familiar with the city, are pretty typical Upper West Siders, old, crazy, talk too close to your face types. And these people pass. The management company is gut renovating the units and charging market rate, which is easily six to seven times the previously charged rate. I bring this up only to show that there is a very diverse economic slash personality population in the building. The person inhabiting our unit prior to us was an older man named John, who had lived here since the early years in the 1940s. I had a chance to see the unit before it was renovated, and it was bizarre to say the least. It obviously hadn't been touched since the 50s and very poorly maintained. The man had five different rooms, all of which he had painted a solid color, including the floor. The dining area was floor-to-ceiling fire truck red, the living room was black, and the bedrooms were Pantone yellow, floor to ceiling. According to our neighbors, who are also recent additions to the building, he would blast opera music at 2 a.m. He was in his 90s, and his boyfriend was in his 30s, and they were always screaming at each other, and they lived in complete filth. 
He was well known on our block, mostly because he had lived here his whole life. So that's a lot of background. But I feel like it gives me a reason of why what's happening is happening. After the dust settled from our move into the newly redone apartment, my husband was working late and I was home on the couch. It is positioned in such a way that when I am sitting on one end, the guest bedroom door is just cut off from your line of sight. I'm with my dog doing a Sudoku when I hear the gentle click of the door closing. My dog's head perks up and he gives a low growl. He's a schnauzer, so this isn't uncommon for him if he hears any kind of unexpected noise. I get up and see the guest room door has shut. I go in. All the windows are closed in the apartment, but it's an old ass building, so I don't think anything of it. I open the door and go back to my puzzle. A few minutes later, the door closes again, but with a bit more intention. The sound spooks me but only that I wasn't expecting it. I'm genuinely just thinking it's structural. I open the door again and decide to watch it for a bit and see if I can see where the fault is. It stays perfectly still for about three to four minutes. I turn around to go back to the couch and I shit you not, that door immediately slams behind me. Now I am scared. I whip around to open the door and it is locked. Handle won't budge. It's worth repeating that all these fixtures are brand new which kind of feeds the argument of malfunctions, but also that it shouldn't. My brain couldn't decide. What happened next is harder to explain with just words. When I have told this part of the story to other people, I'm able to demonstrate, but I put my ear against the door. It's a cheaper, modern, single panel door, so it looks nice, but doesn't feel hearty. And I immediately hear something knock on the other side, as if it were a quick tap with the backside of the hand using their knuckle. I could hear the position of the hand if that makes sense, and the door gave a gentle vibration. This is when I straight up freaked, grabbed my dog, decided it was time for his evening walk, and called a friend who wouldn't think I was insane. I got back and closed myself in the bedroom. These kind of events continue. My parents come to stay with us one week, and we wake up the next morning, and my mom says to me at breakfast, you know you have a ghost, right? I had not mentioned our experience to others because literally anyone who stayed with us would be in this spooky room and I didn't want them to be on edge. I go totally numb when she says this. I ask her why she thinks that and her response was, I saw him. He was sitting in your desk chair. I don't think it's a mean ghost though. He seemed very old. I couldn't engage in conversation further. My grandfather had been in World War II and told us about when himself and a few other soldiers had been separated from his unit and were trying to get to Normandy. They had gone through a clearing in a wooded area but had to drop when they heard something approaching. They were on their bellies in low grass when they saw a 20 or 30 German soldiers running across the clearing, clearly in a state of panic. Then they just froze in mid-step. He said they resembled statues and that some weren't even touching the ground and that there was no noise whatsoever, even the birds had gone silent. After a few seconds came a loud noise, like metal scraping on concrete and the frozen soldiers started to become blurry to the point at which they vanished without a trace. This had been reported by all of the soldiers that were present and all were called to the War Office London after their return to the UK. There, they were pressed on what they saw over the period of a few days and were taken back to the same spot in France shortly after the war had ended. Surprisingly, when they got there, there were other men sharing the same accommodation who reported similar occurrences in the exact same area. They were all taken to the woods and had to describe where and how the events took place. My granddad had said that the entire area was guarded heavily and that part of the ground was heavily excavated. The strangest thing of all, the other thing he said, was that there were hundreds of dogs in the area just milling around for no apparent reason. They returned to the UK with a gag order, ordering them never to speak about any of this. He went back to the same spot in France before he died in 1985 and said the area had been covered with unmarked warehouses and was guarded by an unusually professional security company. He reckoned they were military. Me and two friends go down and rent a boat on Lake Okeechobee in Florida. We get a 30-foot pontoon boat that has a cover, although there's no cabin or anything under the main deck. It's winter in South Florida, so it's cool but not cold. Thus, we decide to just sleep on the boat instead of setting up a camp. We plan on spending three days and two nights on the lake. We spend our time drinking, fishing, and playing games. It's sometime on the second night when I just wake up. I'm still drunk from our previous activities, but my senses are on overdrive, and I just feel aware of something. I was sleeping towards the back of the boat 
while my friends are at the front. It's eerily calm with no waves in the water. We were about 250 feet from shore with land on our port side. I started scanning the tree line looking for something. Nothing on land. So I scanned the water on the port side. Nothing. So I scanned the water aft of the boat. Nothing. I didn't want to disturb my friends up front, so I scanned the water on the starboard side. That's when I saw it. A skull floating in the water with just the eye sockets and part of the nasal cavity sitting there in the water looking right at me about 50 feet away. An immediate sense of dread took me. It was the most scared I'd ever been in my life. Then an even worse feeling took over. Calmness and the sudden urge to jump in the water. I had the notion that I would be at home and at peace if I just jumped into the water. Before I could act on it, I think one of my friends stirred in their sleep because I heard a beer bottle start rolling near the front of the boat. This snapped me out of it, and the feeling of dread returned. I yelled at them to get up while they moved to start the engines. One doesn't respond at all while the other drunkenly tells me to fuck off. I yell again that I'm not fucking around and nothing. I'm about to pull the starter on the engine slash yell again at my friends when I hear something. I freeze and listen closely, a very faint splashing sound that is slowly getting closer. I forget about yelling at my friends and focus on starting the engine. I pull and pull and pull on the starter and nothing. In between the pulls, I hear the splashing getting closer, but I don't dare look at the direction of the noise. Finally, the engine starts and I punch it out of there. I must have gone 30 miles before I came to a stop to conserve fuel until the sun rose and my friends woke up. I spent the rest of the night scanning the waters just in case. I had to make up a bullshit excuse to explain to my friends why we were so far away from our previous spot. I wanted to tell them, but I doubt they would believe me. When I got home, I did some research, and apparently Native American tribes possibly used the lake as a burial ground. Plus, there are thought to be the bodies of many victims of hurricanes throughout the decades laying in the lake. Fishermen have found many human bones over the years. This was over six years ago, and I've yet to set foot near any body of water larger than my shower. No lakes, oceans, rivers, water parks, pools, hot tubs, nothing. I don't blame you if you don't believe some random guy on the internet. Many times I tried to write it off as my drunk self seeing things. However, I can't write off the feeling of wanting to jump into the water with something, real or not, that struck me with terror just a moment ago. Thinking about that feeling of wanting to go into the water with whatever was out there chills me to this day. My grandmother got a call from her son. He was telling her how much he loved her and that he will be going away. The phone was cutting in and out. This was before cell phones. My grandmother thought this is weird and is out of his character. This was at 10 a.m. Right when she hung up the phone, two police officers showed up at her door. They told her that they are sorry to tell her that her son died in a motorcycle accident at 8 o'clock in the morning. My grandmother said that it is impossible that she just got off the phone with him. Somewhere during the mid-90s, when I was still in elementary school, my mother and I were sorting through old junk in the attic. We were sitting side by side in a closet that contained these removable panels that allowed access to the attic space on either side of the closet. We had dusty old junk all around us. It was the middle of the day, and we were the only two people in the house. Neither of us were speaking much as we were too focused on all the old junk we were discovering. Out of nowhere, I clearly heard what sounded like a small child's pleading voice exclaim, Mommy, I don't know how I managed not to shit my pants. I was immediately terrified. I was frozen in place for what seemed like an hour, but was probably only a minute. My mother looked me in the eye and asked, Did you hear it too? I said yes. We never spoke of it again. <laughs>